So, let's talk about some Deathloop, huh? Uh, wow. Saw some trailers for this game, was impressed. I like Dishonored, I like Arcane Studios, I like what they make, I like things that look generally like Bioshock Infinite. So I pre-ordered it and I started playing. And boy, was I let down. At first, I don't wanna, I don't wanna ruin this video, but it gets better. The AI felt super easy, the voice acting was cheesy and loud. Dude, what is up with video games? It's like, there's like a genre of comedy that's video game comedy, and it's so like, it tends to lean towards a character being so annoying that it's supposed to be funny, or the game is just trying to be too self-aware, or sometimes the character is just straight up obnoxious. Son of a fuck! What the fuck's my name? And the bummer is Deathloop's voice acting is actually really well executed. Just the writing behind it kind of falls flat for me. But anyway, I should probably start with explaining what Deathloop is. Me explaining it, it's probably gonna sound confusing, but in order to prevent that, I've actually made this convenient little animation right here. Deathloop is a stealth assassin shooter game similar to Dishonored or Bioshock. You play as Colt, an assassin who wakes up on a beach stuck in a time loop, kind of like Groundhog's Day. Except in order to end the time loop, instead of bettering yourself and helping the people of Punxsutawney, you have to stalk and kill eight targets called Visionaries in one single day. If you die three times or even one of them still lives before midnight, the loop resets and you'll end up back on the beach with no equipment or abilities. This lady is Juliana. She is controlled by another player online and hunts you down each time you are trying to kill a visionary, acting as the theoretical wrench that is thrown into your plans. Juliana adds a much needed stress to the game. No, never mind. I'll say that later. Every time you die or fail the death loop, you lose all weapons and abilities starting from scratch. However, Colt can collect a currency known as Residuum that allows him to infuse guns and abilities that he can keep throughout every time loop, making him a more formidable force over time to be able to complete and then break the time loop. That's pretty much it. So you can probably see already how this game can be pretty intricate, but when you start playing, it really starts smoothening, if that's a word, out. Now, let's go back to the beginning of the video where I was basically hating on the game. A uh, little time loop right there for you. Let's talk about the near brain dead AI. Now, I think there's a case to be made for how dumb the AI seems to be. You can sprint behind these guys, kill their friends in front of them, and they're none the wiser. Not in front of them, but if you're behind them or two inches behind their head, they aren't gonna flinch. But here's the thing, you can die quick in this game. If you run into somebody with a shotgun, if you set off a trap, if you run into more than four enemies at the same time, it gets pretty dicey. Ah, there's plenty of enemies around the map to watch out for. Holy shit. And once you start killing visionaries, you'll kind of recognize that visionaries are kind of the king of the castle. And a lot of times they're like in a base that has a hundred guys with them that if one detects you, the entire fort can come down on you. And on top of that, once Juliana gets involved, all they're trying to do is find you and kill you. And they could be stalking you like no. Batman. Where are you? So all these things combined, and then you have the dumb AI, it's like, there's gotta be a reason for it. And I think the reason is for you to feel like a badass and have fun racking up 30 kills before you go kill the main visionary. It's, it just makes you feel awesome. It's like a Marvel movie, man. Like, sure, it's not the most realistic, but at the same time, it's badass and cool. So once you get past the tutorial of the game, which is basically when you get all of your assassin tools, the game just opens up and lets you decide how you wanna play the game, whether it's through Arsenal leads or visionary leads. Arsenal leads are basically side quests you can go on to go pursue better gear or abilities that you can get. Or you can go to the visionary leads, which is basically the main quest where you're hunting down visionaries, you're gathering more information to help you line up and kill all eight visionaries in a row. And the game really does put a strong focus on you gathering information. Yeah, you know, it's classic spy game stuff. Also, you know, it's not just like information. It's not like you have to like memorize everything. It really means more of like, you don't know the code to this door, go get the information to unlock that door so you can go in and slit this guy's throat. The downside to the amount of focus on information is the reading. Holy moly mackerel, cut it down. This game is so fast paced and you're just constantly assassinating and killing people and all of a sudden you like get into a bathroom and then you see a bunch of napkins stacked up in the corner and you pick it up and you read it and it's like an eight paragraph summary of this guy's like love life or something like that and then at the very end it says oh and by the way the passcode to this is 87852 it's like why did i read your whole sabby sob story man like i just want your key code to your vault with a freaking cool gun in it 
And there was a ton of tutorials in the beginning, like way too much reading to do. We can figure it out, we can get it. I didn't read 80% of the tutorials I got because I just felt it. I just knew what I was going to do or have to do because guess what, I've played a video game before. A little side note too, I think that's really cool is every passcode in this game is randomly generated. So you can't just be like, oh, I'm blocked by this door. What's the passcode? So I go look it up on some Wikipedia or something like that. You can't do that. You have to go find out the information on your own. Now, I wanna get into the actual game game. My favorite freaking aspect of this game, you guessed it. Slabs. You probably didn't guess that. No other place calls them slabs. To anybody that's played Dishonored, you know what this is. Slabs are abilities that you can equip in one hand and allows you to do teleportation, telekinesis, invisibility. There's this really cool one that you can like tag a bunch of enemies at the same time and then if you shoot one in the head, it kills all of them. It's freaking dope. I just love that you can like approach the game as like a stealthy assassin creeping through freaking buildings and teleporting between roofs. But you can also just go straight up balls to the wall and like throw grenades in windows, throw people off buildings, freaking shotgunning and running everywhere. I just love that it lets you choose whether you want to be freaking James Bond or John Wick. And let me just say, much like John Wick or James Bond, this game has style, baby. Remind you of anybody? <laughs> it's me. Why is nobody from your characters to the guns to even the interior design? The game just oozes 60s cool vibes. It's like Mad Men meets Austin Powers. Guns are super out there and like zany. You have a nail gun as like one of your main stealth guns. And boy, does this thing sound like God. Hey, like and then you got just like crazy guns. This gun's got two magazines. You can reload it while you're shooting. Who needs to do that? You also have a gun that's two pistols that transforms into an SMG. You have this shotgun that transforms into a Tesla coil, but unfortunately kind of sucks. That didn't hit anything? They went above and beyond on the unique designs of the guns in this game. There's part of me that wants to keep going on and on about the cool aspects of this game. But, dude, I, I, I haven't even talked about the other half of the game, which is protecting the time loop from it being broken by Colt. That's right, you don't just play as Colt, you play as Juliana. Hopefully I add a bang sound. Protecting the time loop is the multiplayer version of Deathloop, where you are now entering somebody else's game and trying to kill that Colt. Again, Colt has three lives every time he gets into a game, so you have to kill him three times and you only have one life. Oh, I killed him too! So basically how it works is anytime Colt is hunting visionary, Juliana can show up. I love that the game gives you so much freedom to explore the entire map that Colt is in as Juliana and you have a Colt running around like trying to kill this visionary that you're trying to protect. If his body is still here. I love that some people that play Juliana can just like stalk you forever. When I play Juliana, I don't feel like I have any stakes at odds because you can't lose any of your equipment or anything. So you can just hunt down Colt. Ooh, mama. You know, I'm always skeptical of a game that says like, you can get into your friend's game and beat their score or whatever. And it's like, there's no like real stakes in play. But when you play Deathloop, dude, if you got to like the evening and your friend jumps into your game and kills you three times, Bullshit. you possibly just costed them three hours of work that you just eliminated because you wanted to level up your Juliana to get a new skin. Like it's wild. <laughs> when I play as Juliana, there's part of me that loves that I just got a new slab for Juliana. But there's also a part of me that I realize I am ruining, ruining another gamer's experience in this game. Sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. 
But I will say, every time you kill Colt three times, it really does feel like you're succeeding in some sort of difficult task. And a lot of the times it can be. Some guys are freaking pro CSGO players, and then some guys are freaking like invisible men. Oh my gosh, I knew it. I was like, there's, I was wondering, I, I, wow. So you probably see what I'm saying. Multiplayer is freaking sick. Some of the time. The other times, it f***s up so f***ing much. Fix your multiplayer now. In a couple of updates, please. Here's how you can do it. Okay, a big thing that I run into all the time is just straight up disconnecting. Nothing new to the gaming world, but that happens way too often. Come on. Don't pair me with people I'm not gonna connect to. Second thing is, tell me when it doesn't connect to the game. I start the matchmaking, I start drawing, I don't mind a long matchmaking thing, that's okay, I understand your population isn't like super big yet, your game's growing, but tell me, because I'm looking down at my phone, at my tablet, whatever, that I didn't get into the game. Dang it, it didn't tell me again. Next thing is, when you actually do get into a game, a lot of the time, the person's AFK, and it doesn't tell you that they're AFK. Here's the main thing. Oh my gosh, the lag. It ruins the experience because a lot of this game depends on fast gameplay and fast reaction times and teleporting and all these kind of things that if you don't have the right latency, you are fucked. Man, it's really fun when it's not lagging or destroyed by other some annoying problem. Oh, also I'm dressed like this because it's supposed to reflect like my character in the in the game. But man, I love Deathloop. That was like the weirdest thing where I started playing a game, hated it, and then it just like full swing just got me and it just stuck its claws in and stuck that machete right through my chest cavity and freaking I fell in love. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure to like this video uh, if you did. It, it really does help, it really does help. I appreciate it. Subscribe if you want to see more. Um, I'm very hot and itchy right now, so I'm gonna go take this off. But thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, see ya.